doesn't it? Now, when they exchange garments, write this down. This is what this step says. It says, all that I own is yours. All that you own is mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brother Jay, I, I got need of that fine new tie you got. <laughs> That's all right. Don't go. You don't have to take it off right now. <laughs> if you insist. <laughs> Are you with me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when they exchange garments, they're, they're, they're making a covenant relationship. And what they're saying to everybody is, all that I own is yours, all that you own is mine. I mean, we're just going to be there for one another. I mean, if JJ's got a need and he can't fill that need and I have the means by which to meet it, I'm going to rush over to his side. I am going to meet my covenant brother's needs. Likewise, if I get in a predicament and I've got a need and I can't meet him and he's got the need or the ability to meet my needs, he rushes over and he meets my needs because we are in a solemn binding agreement, one that we mutually agreed on and we have sealed this thing, haven't we? Yeah. Amen? Amen? Step number one is the exchange of garments. Amen? Now, just for, just show you why, your wife, you know, I'm going to give you your coat back. But we still exchanged, right? All right. He's got some fine new threads. <laughs> All right. Now, do you understand about the exchange of garments? Step number two. You can be seated. Thank you, Jay. Step number two. We find it right here in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 4. It says, And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on him and gave it to David and his garments even to his sword, his bow, and his girdle. Now, we're not talking about what you would normally think of as a girdle today, being a lady's garment. We're talking about a weapons belt. Now, what was the big deal about that? I mean, they've already changed robes, and now... They exchange weapons. Step number two is exchange weapons. They exchange weapons. David takes off his weapon belt. You ever seen one of these carpenters with all these carpenter belts? And he's got these hammers and tools and all this stuff hanging off. Well, you used to go around, you know, kind of like the gunslingers, you know. And, and you wear this weapons belt. And, you know, you have these guns, these six guns hanging on. I used to do that all the time when I was a kid. I had two six guns. I was fast, too. I mean, that's fast. Hello? You with me? Well, back in their day, they wore a weapons belt and there'd be knives and hatchets. And, you know, and, they, and they'd, have, they'd have their quiver with arrows. They'd have a fine bow. And so they swapped out weapons. Can you see? Can you get the picture? Jonathan takes off his belt with his knives and his hatchet, take off his quiver, hands him his bow, and David says, well, here, you can have my slingshot. Hello? Of course, that slingshot killed that giant and put the other four on the run. Are you with me? They exchanged weapons. Now, what is the significance of the exchange of weapons? The significance of the exchange of weapons is this. I will defend you even to the death. In other words, Brother Steve, come up here a minute. Man's got a good name. <laughs> we get into a covenant relationship. We just love each other. We're going to cut this blood covenant. And so Steve says to me, he says, well, he said, you know, I've got a Colt Python 44 Magnum revolver. And I'm going to give you, Pastor, my Colt 44 Magnum. It's stainless steel. It's the finest that there is. And I said to him, well, Steve, you know, I've got a nice Smith & Wesson 357 Mag. I've got a nice holter, holster with it and all the goodies. I'll give you that. So I put on his 44 mag. He puts on my 357 mag. We're walking down the street. We got our guns strapped on. Somebody come along and say, oh, Pastor, he must be in covenant with Brother Steve. 
So I said, how's that? Well, he's got on Brother Steve's 44 mag. I mean, I recognize that Colt Python stainless steel. And besides that, that's handmade holster. You know how he is? He always likes everything handmade right up there to perfection. His wife said, <laughs> they know we're in relationship because we got each other's weapons. Now, what's the deal? What he's saying to me, what I'm saying to him is this. You get yourself in a problem, somebody attacks you and they want to kill you, I will come and defend you even if in defending you I have to die doing it. That's awesome, isn't it? There's a, a what reason there? Protection. We're going to defend one another. We're going to defend one another. Even if we have to die defending the other one. You say, but wait a minute. <laughs> what if this guy that I'm in covenant with started the fight for no good reason? I mean, what if it's an egghead fight? <laughs> Why should I go down there and defend him? I mean, he did. The dummy, he did it. Shouldn't have got in the fight to begin. Why do I go down there? Because we're in covenant relationship. I said, because we're in covenant relationship. Now, after I help him whip the other guy, then me and him, we're going to have a talk. I say, look, don't be going out there starting these fights again. Let the other guy start it. Okay, does that sound all right to you? I won't do it again. All right. <laughs> Thank you. But we in covenant relationship, aren't we? We've exchanged weapons, which says, I will defend you even to the death. Now turn back to Deuteronomy chapter 28. I want to show you how we can skip over covenant talk if we're not careful. Because this passage is one of the favorite passages to all spirit-filled Christians. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Are you with me? In Deuteronomy 28, the word says, beginning in verse 7, The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Oh, whoa, wait a minute. Could that be covenant talk? Does that sound like the Lord is using his weapons of warfare to fight your enemies and your battles? Well, it does to me. Because it says right there, when my enemies come out against me one way, God stands up and God says, get! I like it. You see, because there's been an exchange of weapons. Now, you see, when I'm going to exchange weapons with somebody, I like to exchange weapons with somebody that's got bigger weapons. <laughs> Did you notice I pulled that off a little bit ago? <laughs> I gave him 357 mag. I got the 44 mag back. Uh, he said, well, I don't understand that, Pastor. What's the deal? Well, 357 mag will put a hole about that big in you. Now, that 44 mag will cut you in half and leave you in two pieces. <laughs> so is that, is that, now do we understand? That's the same relationship we got here. I mean, you go out there and you duking it up with the devil and you get along so-so, but God comes along and annihilates what the devil's done. All of a sudden, because of knowledge about steps of cutting covenant, we're reading this passage we've read so often in a whole new different light, aren't we? Yeah. We're looking down there and we're saying, I wonder if that's covenant talk. God's saying, I'm going to give you my weapons of warfare and drive off your enemies and fight for you. Yeah, that's covenant talk. That's covenant talk. Now, you're going to go to reading through the Bible? You get in there and go to reading something like this, and pretty soon you're going to be going, hey, that could be covenant talk. Well, what's the effects of this? What's the outcome of it? What's the purpose of it? Well, let, let's look at a third step in cutting blood covenant. Genesis chapter 17. A third step in cutting blood covenant. Genesis chapter 17. Whew, I mean, already it's starting to get good, isn't it? 
Genesis 17, verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my... I will make my... Oh, what, kind of, what kind of deal is this now? God says, I will make my solemn binding agreement, one that cannot be broken except by the death of the one who breaks it. I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be the father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Verse 7, And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee and their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. Step number three in cutting a covenant is the exchange of names. The exchange of names. When a covenant agreement is cut, there is an exchange of names. Amen? Now look at this. The Lord goes on later in the chapter to say this, extending the covenant now to those that are also in relationship with Abram. He said, as far as Sarai, thy wife, you're not going to call her Sarai any longer. You're going to call her Sarah. This is covenant talk. Turn to your neighbor and say covenant talk. It's covenant talk. Are you with me? And when there's a covenant being made, quite often there will be an exchange of names. Now, God said, as for me, for my part of this covenant, I'm changing your name. I'm changing your name from Abram to Abraham. Now, the word Abram or the name Abram means father of altitude. Or we'd say exalted father. But the name Abraham means father of multitude. So when God changed his name, he didn't just pull a name out of a hat. He didn't just change it from Abram to Abraham just so it'd be easier for Abram to remember. He did it with purpose. He said, you won't be called an exalted father, but you'll be called the father of a multitude. And isn't that what he just told him in the covenant agreement? I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Kings are coming out of you. Isn't that what he said? So in a covenant relationship, there is the exchange of names. Now, let's talk about marriage. Marriage is covenant relationship. Isn't that right? And there are a number of things that we do in marriage that signify covenant relationship. Now, did you ever notice one of those little, oh, th th those nice little things, you know, those little traditions that you do? You know, the, the groom buys the wife a beautiful article of clothing before they leave to go on the honeymoon. The bride, well, she buys the groom a beautiful article of clothing. You got the picture. We have kids in here. I said, you got the picture? You thought that was a nice little tradition, wasn't it? What is it? Exchanging of garments. That's covenant talk. Exchanging of garments. Isn't that right? <laughs> Did you ever wonder about the exchange of weapons in marriage? <laughs> I can have a heyday with this one, but I'm resisting. <laughs> I'm mellowed out. <laughs> oh. But I mean, you know, what's one of the things 